So then the next thing we would do is we would go to our five cardiac areas. And so we're gonna listen to each of those, first with our diaphragm, listening for our normal heart sounds, and then the second time with our bell, listening for those extra heart sounds or any uh, murmurs that mm -hmm. would be occurring. Now, I, in, in nursing school, I always remember this as all pigs eat too much. There's all pigs eat too much. There's ape to man. Ape to man. But so the important thing, whatever mnemonic works for you, mm -hmm. but I love that all pigs eat too much. That's very catchy. <laughs> it's that A-P-E-T-M. So all pigs, A-P-E, eat mm -hmm. T, two, and then M, much. So that's the key component. So where exactly are this, where are the locations on the chest here? Wonderful, because this is important to know, not only for if you have lab, where you have to do return demonstrations, mm -hmm. also just to actually be a nurse and do a cardiac yeah. assessment, it's an integral part of being a nurse, but also commonly tested on, on nursing school assessments and exams are these exact locations. So the first one is going to be the aortic valve, okay. and that's going to be in the second intercostal space, right sternal border. Then you're going to jump over the sternum and go to the pulmonic valve. So that's in the second intercostal space, left sternal border. And remember, when those two close at the same time, that's when you get your S2, your dub. So you're going to hear S2, the loudest there. Okay. Here's our herbs point. So that is the third intercostal space, still left sternal border. So you just go about one stethoscope head down. Then for our tricuspid valve, it's usually about the fourth to fifth intercostal space, still left sternal border. So note that we've been staying right along that border this whole time until we get to the mitral valve, AKA the apical pulse. Right. And that's when we're gonna go to that mid clavicular line, mm -hmm. kind of in that fourth to fifth, usually, especially for an adult client, it's gonna be in that fifth intercostal space and you're gonna be at that left mid clavicular line. And then if you wanna to listen to the apical pulse, you could stay here for a full minute and looking at the clock and count how many beats. Oftentimes, and this is asked about a lot, mm -hmm. that apical pulse rate, we wanna count for a full minute. 60 seconds, it's always tested, right? Especially for certain medications like right. digoxin. Digoxin is huge. Beta blockers, mm -hmm. so really important that apical heart rate for a full minute. Now, if, if you think about it, the heart is right here, right? So we're listening to the sounds around the heart. And I used to work in the ER. Every time someone comes in, we do an EKG on them, right? So we put stickers in those heart sound locations, and we're just trying to wrap the heart to get a full picture of the heart. So anytime we're assessing the heart, you have to know these locations. So again, that's the A, mm -hmm. P, E, T, M for those mnemonics. Those are what those letters stand for. All pigs eat too much. Hey everyone, Nurse Mike here from SimpleNursing.com. Did you get your beautifully handcrafted study guide bundle yet? It highlights the key points and memory tricks in this video. Plus, get 900 more videos not here on YouTube, all neatly organized in the playlist. Along with thousands of practice questions written by actual NCLEX writers. So don't be scared, be prepared. Try it free today. Visit SimpleNursing.com. And so when you're listening with the diaphragm, mm -hmm. it's gonna be those normal sounds, that S1 and S2, AKA lub dub. Mm -hmm. So you would listen for those sounds the first time through and say lub dub or S1 and S2 are noted. Then you're gonna click over to your bell and you're gonna do the same thing again. Okay. So you'd be listening at the aortic, pulmonic, herbs point, tricuspid, and then the mitral. And this time, since you're listening with your bell, you're listening for those abnormal sounds. So that's gonna be your extra heart sounds or your murmurs. Okay, and what is a murmur sound? Is it like a swishing or? Absolutely, it's like that, kind of like a washing machine oh. or like that swishing you can hear at a blood pressure cuff. Lots of times they'll even write whoosh, whoosh or swoosh on exam questions and that's indicating that murmur and that's gonna be turbulent blood flow through the valves. So then the extra heart sounds. Mm -hmm. So what numbers are extra after one and two? Because one and two are our normal sounds. Three and four. Beautiful. All right. So our extra heart sounds are three and four. So S3, okay. if you hear it, so it would say instead of just lub dub, you'd hear lub dub in, lub dub in. So a third sound. So an easy way to remember when you'd hear it is S3 comes right after S2. Okay. The number three always comes after the number two. Right. So I always think lub dub in, one, two, three, one, two, three. And so why would S3 happen? Mm -hmm. It's because of extra blood volume. So extra blood volume comes sloshing into the heart. 
Oh. And it creates a third sound because of it sloshing in. So sometimes I even rewrite that lub dub in. I think sloshing in, oh. sloshing in. One, two, three. And, and where would you hear this at? On the herbs point or? So you would all actually, over? so you could hear it all over and with the bell of the stethoscope. That's a great question. Okay. So S4 are, so S4, it's not four sounds, it's just a fourth type. And so this one I like to call my grumpy old man. <laughs> because grumpy old men, they complain. If you ask them to maybe take out the trash, they'll do it, but they're going to kind of go, ugh, first. Okay. So if you think about lub dub, lub dub, S4 comes right before S1. So S4, our grumpy old man, it's going to do S1, but it's going to go, ugh, lub dub, ugh, lub dub. So it's going to complain a little bit first. Okay. So, uh, lub dub. Or I like to rewrite it, like I said, for S3, sloshing in. Now it's, uh, stiff wall. Uh, stiff wall. For, ah. uh, lub dub. Uh, lub dub. And it does that because of a stiff ventricle wall. Yes, so okay. that So that, uh, stiff wall helps you remember a stiff ventricle wall, which makes sense that this happens in older adults because as we get older, everything stiffens up mm -hmm. like a raisin. Yes. And so S4 can be heard with older adults, which is why I like to think about a grumpy old man. So if S4 happens, it's gonna happen right before S1. Okay, right before S1. And you would hear it, essentially, you could hear it at all locations and you'd be listening for that with the bell of your stethoscope. Fantastic. And so then with our murmur, so, no, so when we're listening, we want no extra heart sounds, so no S3 or S4. And then we'd also be listening for those murmurs, that swishing. The swishing. Lots of times they'll ask about a systolic or a diastolic murmur. Just pay attention to when's the murmur occurring. If it occurs during diastole, it's a diastolic murmur. Mm -hmm. If it occurs during systole, it's a systolic murmur. So as you guys remember, diastolic is when the heart is decompressing or basically filling with blood. And that systole is that squeeze. So it really just depends on when it's happening, right? Absolutely. And there's a few other murmurs uh, that also go into further and usually like med surge and whatnot. And these are the ones you have to know for health assessment. 